Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to semi-finals of Magnus Carlsen Invitational. These are the pairings, so Fabiano Caruana against Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen against Ding Liren. And uh, today I would like to show you one of the games uh, between Fabiano Caruana, who's gonna play as Black, his rapid ranking 2773 and he's 27 years old, number two uh, in the world in standard time format. He was also the uh, last cad candidate's uh, winner and pretender to the world champion title. Uh, however, he drew all the games against Magnus Carlsen and then lost in the shorter time format. So definitely he still need to improve his performance in um, this field. And his opponent Hikaru Nakamura, beast of speed. He is definitely uh, one of the fastest calculating uh, grandmasters in the, on this planet and uh, his rapid ranking 2829 and in blitz he's even faster and better because he has incredible ranking 2900 uh, so um, definitely uh, one of the favorites of this tournament as well he is 32 years old and he's gonna play as white and also Hikaru Nakamura has a huge experience uh, in the online chess, okay, he has his own Twitch channel and he, you know, every day he just, um, you know, show the games against the Grandmasters, sometimes he play also uh, with less experienced players, but it's always great show, so... Uh, he has just just more experience in the online uh, playing however this game was called uh, the best game of the tournament so far so i would like to show you uh, this is the game number four. First two games were drawn then hikaru nakamura won as black uh, and then here Fabiano Caruana had to win as black if he wanted to stay uh, in the tournament. So this is why this game uh, is called the best game as and it was, you know, incredible performance and incredible recovery by uh, Fabiano Caruana. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Uh, Hikaru Nakamura opened with knight on f3, very flexible, Zuckertort opening, sometimes called ready, but maybe, maybe not precise. And here we have d6, so Pirt's invitation. Uh, we have d4 uh, and now knight on f6. So now Pirt's is not possible because, of course, the knight control e4 we have c4 uh, we have g6 knight on c3 and now bishop on f5 and now g3 is uh, totally uh, normal uh, the most popular uh, way of playing but Hikaru Nakamura always choose some sidelines and he play knight on h4 uh, so bishop has to retreat bishop on d7 is a little bit uh, sad bishop here but also the knight on h4 is not uh, placed very well well, uh, we have e4, now e5, so fighting for the center, and now knights go back to f3. Uh, and here black has to decide what the pawn structure they want to play. Um, so for example, e takes on d4, and knight on d4, bishop g7, this is completely fine, very popular line. However, we have knight on c6, so inviting d5 and d5 by Hikaru Nakamura, knight on e7 and now bishop e2, so preparing for the castle, we have bishop on g7, the same with the black, uh, and now bishop e3, we have castle by Fabiano Caruana, knight on d2, now being ready for potential f5, which is the main plan for black here, uh, is always good, then f3 is possible, uh, and here we have c6 by Fabiano Caruana, knight on e e8 was played before for example by Badur Jobava uh, but we have c6 here uh, castle by uh, Hikaru Nakamura and knight on e8 now uh, and here uh, b4 would be quite strong plan for Hikaru Nakamura he didn't go for that yet 
And for example, F5, F3, creating this, this pawn chain, uh, C takes on D5, C takes on D5, and now F4. So this was quite possible after Bishop on F2, White would have uh, the plan uh, to attack the weakness uh, on D6. So for example, this way, that was of course possible and Black uh, would have to defend, but also uh, could create some attacking chances uh, against the king. So these are, you know, the plans uh, in this opening. However, here we have D takes on C6 by Hikaru Nakamura, uh, B takes on C6 and now B4. So uh, B5 is coming, so that is the plan and Black should do something about that. We have Bishop on E6, Knight on B3 remaneuvering now also uh, this D6 uh, can become the weakness, it's already the weakness, so definitely uh, Black have to pay attention. Uh, and now we have F5, so attacking on the king side, very standard plan for Black here. Uh, we have F3 of course, Knight on F6 and now knight a5 so putting the pressure on c6 um, and now also a uh, queen can join and it can be very unpleasant for black so we have queen on d7 over protecting the pawn on c6 we have rook on c1 developing the the rook so rooks should be moved uh, to the central squares we have rook a on c8 and queen on d2, uh, rook f on d8 and now rook f on d1. So uh, development is finished and now the players have to uh, show what they want to do and black has to win to still stay in the tournament. We have bishop on f7 and now bishop on f2. Uh, b5 was possible uh, for now and it was actually the best move in the position, so for example b5 uh, and the game could continue however we have bishop on f2 so hikaru don't want to you know uh, get kicked with the f4 however here uh Fabiano Caruana could play queen on c7 and now b5 would not be possible because the knight would hang. Uh, but he play h6 and we have uh, b5. So the plan is continued by Hikaru Nakamura and here we have c5. So he invites actually Hikaru Nakamura to exploit the weakness on d6. Uh, but what other plans white would have so the best of course is using these two pawns uh, in the attack against one pawn create the past pawn and that would be very very powerful how to do that so uh, one option is of course uh, you know retreat the the knight and then you know attack but that could be quite slow so hikaru has a different plan he played bishop on d3 we have f4 now no more tension on e4 as this bishop together with the pawn uh, could create some problems here uh, and he want to make you know the attack uh, on the king side by his own uh, so Hikaru Nakamura goes for knight on d5 so he lets actually Fabiano Caruana uh, to cover his weakened d6 pawn and we have knight e takes on d5 c takes on d5 uh, and now there is no weakness here and also black has the past pawn uh, for now is a very crowdy so uh, of course it can't be pushed uh, but now fabiano caruana play g5 so he continue his plan uh, we have knight on c6 very powerful knight now this is a monster knight definitely great outpost here uh, keeping an eye on a7 now attacking the rook so we have rook on e8 and now king h1 so uh, Hikaru Nakamura uh, preparing his position uh, if any you know uh, opening of the g file uh, gonna happen then he is ready to bring the rooks there and uh, attack on the open g file uh, we have g4 so waiting for for the exchange here and now uh, bishop on e2 would be the best move in the position here to strengthen uh, f3 actually uh, however we have bishop on h4 and this actually let fabiano caruana to play g takes on f3 uh, he didn't play that uh, but but after g takes on f3 g takes on f3 he could get the very strong attack with the queen on h3 and now uh, attacking the bishop attacking the pawn so white would have to defend and then uh, bishop h5 bishop e2 now defending uh, f3 
three. However, uh, black would have very nice tactic, winning the pawn knight on e4. And after f takes on e4, just exchange the pieces uh, and with the extra pawn and this uh, passed pawn, that would be very, very uh, dangerous for white to continue. However, uh, white still, according to the engine, stands slightly better here, but it's not clear, you know, how to continue the game because this attack on the king can be very, very dangerous. Uh, instead, we have king on h8. So uh, Fabiano Caruana gives Hikaru the time to play bishop on e2, like it should be played in the last move. And now we have bishop on g6. Queen on e1, making some space for the rooks and also defending this bishop, which is uh, pretty important. And I will show you why. We have knight on h7 now. Uh, preparing to jump to g5 and now a4 so uh, Hikaru Nakamura starts his attack uh, with the pawns uh, okay uh, and then now what to play we have knight on g5 as planned and now Hikaru Nakamura has already quite nice advantage but the game uh, starts to be complicated the best for him would just play a5 eventually uh, just exchange this knight if if he feels uncomfortable with that uh, that would give the pair of bishop to black but its position is quite close so that should be safe uh, h takes on g5 and now a5 and then continue the attack and there is not much black can do uh, against uh, against the position of white here. However, we have queen on f1 and actually I try to understand the motives behind this move but I didn't find the, uh, the, the explanation. It's some beyond my understanding. However, uh, if, if you can catch the idea behind it, leave the comment. I'm very interested uh, what could happen here. The point is the queen is not protecting uh, the bishop anymore, which is quite uh, important because now Fabiano Caruana want to exploit that. And he play bishop on f6, uh, threatening to take uh, the pawn uh, on e4. And it's very, very nice tactic. Everybody should know that because now uh, the bishop is without protection. so. It it's attacked and if bishop want to actually take this um, this bishop uh, then the knight can retreat uh, taking the bishop back and this you would, would just win the pawn okay so that's the plan here uh, and Hikaru Nakamura play a5 so uh, he missed the tactic or probably he just um, underestimated uh, we have knight on e4 as planned and now bishop d3 so pinning the knight so now a uh, knight cannot go because the bishop could takes on g6 uh, but black of course can take the the bishop on h4 we have uh, bishop on e4 bishop on e4 and now pawn takes on uh, e4 uh, and here we have already these three pawns uh, against two pawns and it start to look uh, quite dangerous for black so who's gonna be first because white is also attacking on the queen side we have rook on f8 by black and now b6 by hikaru nakamura a takes on b6 a takes on b6 and now queen on b7 blocking the the pawn and here very sticky idea by hikaru nakamura he play rook on a1 and now what black should play here uh, queen a6 is coming this is the main threat and also if black actually takes the pawn on b6 uh, rook d on b1 would be very very unpleasant especially in the you know a fast chess like a rapid game okay because a queen on c queen is almost trapped there is no way to go only queen on c7 d8 is controlled by the knight and now Rook a7 winning the game, trapping the queen and winning the game. Pretty sneaky, okay? Uh, so what black would have to play is uh, take the knight and after rook takes on b6, uh, just rook takes on b6 and, and the game could continue, for example, in this fashion. And uh, what black would have is uh, rook and the bishop against the queen. 
So it would be very difficult for black to continue this as queen can be very very tricky can of course uh, fork the king and the rook or, or the bishop so uh, definitely much easier to play uh, in the short time format like blitz or the rapid uh, with the queen against the, the rook and the, uh, and the bishop. Uh, so uh, here instead of uh, queen on b6 we have rook on a8. Uh, rook on a8, rook on a8, and now queen b5. So defending the, the pawn, and it starts to be very dangerous here. But Fabiano Caruana creates his own attack, so he ha we have f3. Uh, of course, g takes on f3, g takes on f3 is not really great, because now the rook can come, uh, you know, for example, to g2, also this way. The queen can join, uh, the pawn also can be pushed to f2. Very uncomfortable, the queen is, you know, uh, very vulnerable here so uh, Hikaru Nakamura play g3 uh, and here is very interesting moment and it's not really visible to the engines uh, you know uh, there are much better moves but c4 would be very very interesting now it's not like the it's the winning move but white have to be very very precise so for example queen on c4 would not work because a queen on b6, uh, g takes on h4, and now queen b2, that would be very, very dangerous. Uh, so, for example, queen on f1, but now rook a2, and all initiative is in the, in, on the black side. So, queen on g1, but now f2, queen on f1. Uh, and now queen c3 so uh, you know creating another threats uh, mating threat so what to play next knight on e5 is possible to create some some past pawn um, but after d takes on e5 rook d3 what more what more to play queen e1 and this is already winning the game king on g2 now rook a1 and is of course winning, the, the queen is lost and uh, and black would win the game. So uh, after c4, uh, this pawn can't be taken. The only move for white is actually take the bishop uh, and after f2 we have another problems, okay? Uh, queen on f7 and for example this kind of checkmate. What to play next? The queen can come uh, to help because the, there is the obstacle here. So the only move is actually knight on e5. This is what um, Hikaru Nakamura would have to find. Okay, uh, And after rook on f8 uh, threatening the, the promotion, uh, rook f1 only now d takes on e5. But now queen c6, queen c6, attacking h6 and also uh, the queen. So uh, queen on g7 and now king g2 uh, and everything is okay now with the position of uh, white. However, that was some, you know, it was pretty tricky. So for example, queen on f6, uh, just exchange the queens and, uh, and what more, b7. And so now exchange also these pawns and uh, and as you see it's much easier to play uh, for white as this is the c protected past pawn so definitely that would be the option. So a very interesting idea but uh, you know it's a lot of calculations needed maybe not for rapid chess. Uh, this is why Fabiano Caruana play bishop on g5. Uh, we have knight on a5 now attacking the queen, queen on f7. So uh, uh, preparing some moves like f2 uh, and then uh, queen on f3 with the checkmate ideas. Now we have b7 by Hikaru Nakamura. So he attacked the rook uh, and kicking the rook. Otherwise that would be, you know, come with the check. So there is no time uh, to actually checkmate the opponent. So Fabiano Caruana has to move uh, rook to b8. Uh, and now we have rook on f1. And now f2 doesn't work because uh, queen on e2, okay? Uh, because before we had the rook on a8 and it could attack the uh, the, the knight, okay? The, the pawn also was on b6, so no promotion, so uh, white would lose the knight and the game. Uh, but now this is impossible already, so uh, we have king on g7, so bringing the king closer um, to the action and here 
What Hikaru Nakamura should play definitely is H3. Very, very important move uh, because it gives some a uh, breathing space for the king, which gonna be very important. So for example, after H5, queen on c6 that would be interesting move attacking d6 and creating also some ideas on c8 uh, and then f2 that would be uh, maybe dangerous but not winning yet because simply queen on d6 and now there is no checkmate because king can move to h2 very very important move and after bishop on f4 what white have to do is just take the perpetual check and draw the game. Of course, this would be losing. That is a checkmate, so not this way. But queen e7, it's already, you know, uh, drawing the game. King g6, queen e6, and now uh, there is no way uh, to escape from that, okay? So uh, that was interesting idea. However, we have queen on a6 by Hikaru Nakamura. So the pawn is still attacked, however, there is one move for Fabiano Caruana which makes, you know, huge advantage for him. So uh, actually feel free to pause the video and find the plan for black. But it's a couple of moves, very precise, and it's not easy to spot all the line. But, you know, enjoy that while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So uh, queen on g6, this is the move protecting d6, but also attacking e4. And now we already know that there are some mating ideas here. Uh, so a queen on d3 was played by Hikaru Nakamura. He has to retreat. And now we have h5. Uh, and here the position of white is already quite difficult. Hikaru Nakamura uh, play h4. And now another move to find is actually bishop on h4. So sacrificing the bishop uh, for this attack. Uh, very intuitive, especially with the pawn on b7, okay? Uh, we have g takes on h4 and now queen on f6, uh, attacking uh, h4. Uh, and now if queen on d2, for example, then g3 is coming. Uh, and now king on g1, because otherwise we have g2, so king on g1, uh, f2 we check king g2 and only now queen on h4, okay? And now uh, this already you see that this, you know, uh, mating ideas are coming. If rook on h1, then actually take the rook and of course uh, win the game this way. So Hikaru Nakamura didn't go this way, he played uh, king on g1 first and now we have queen on h4, uh, queen on d2 now uh, and here uh, what to play next. Uh, what is the idea be behind the queen on d2? First this queen comes to this diagonal, so uh, it's pretty dangerous here. So for example uh, if black plays something like king on g8 uh, you already see the, the, the difference, okay? This is the first thing. Uh, knight on c4 can come, uh, attack d6 and then jump, for example, to f5 and this would be uh, extremely dangerous for black as the king is totally unprotected. Uh, so, for example, queen on f6, defending, but still, knight d6, okay? Uh, queen on d6 and now queen g5 uh, winning all this pawn and probably uh, drawing the game. So uh, not this way, not this way, definitely. Uh, king on g6 has to be played and this is what Fabiano Caruana played. And now we have knight on c4, but it's already not so powerful here, okay? We have queen on f6 uh, by Fabiano Caruana. He defend the, the d6 pawn. And now how to defend the position, how to continue to defend. Uh, for example, queen on b2, then black just gonna, you know, uh, steamroll the, the, with, the, with this pawn attack. Uh, so h4, uh, queen h2, and then king g5, and then slowly but surely just, just attack, maybe exchange the queens, and with these three pawns that's gonna be, uh, you know, just crashing. So not really the greatest way to continue, but there are no good ways here. Uh, Hikaru Nakamura play knight on a5. Uh, and here actually Fabiano Caruana could end this game and play g3. g3 and after knight on c4, 
Uh, it's too slow. The knight is too slow uh, to attack on d6. We would have f2. Uh, and now we already know what's gonna happen here. So uh, not this way. Uh, rook on f2, g takes on f2, and now queen f2. Uh, the problem is rook on b7. And now what now? White uh, are losing here, okay? Can try some tricks like uh, queen on f5. Uh, and after queen f5, e takes on f5. And now don't take with the king because of this fork. So that would be uh, some nice trick. But after king on f6, uh, there are no more tricks. Knight on d6 can be played, but rook d7, uh, let's say knight on e4, king f5, knight c3. And this is definitely a win for black. They just need some some patience, of course, and uh, and just continue the game. Just play e4, uh, bring the, the the king here, uh, attack the pawn, and then win with the with the extra two or three pawns. So uh, this was definitely uh, the option to win. However, short on time, uh, Fabiano Caruana didn't find this continuation and he continued with queen on h4. So he want to win same time to, uh, to find the continuation. Uh, we have knight on c4, queen on f6, so almost threefold repetition. And here, uh, Hikaru Nakamura uh, make the lives of Fabiano easier. He didn't go back to a5. Uh, and Fabiano would have to find another plan, but he made the things much easier. So he he couldn't go um, to f5 this way, so he tried this way. But this just doesn't work. Knight on 3, uh, losing the game, because we have queen on f4, okay? Queen on f4. Now, uh, f4 is not controlled by the queen, and, uh, and yeah, queen on f2. And now we have queen e4 winning just another pawn and this is just over, okay? We have rook on e1 by Hikaru Nakamura, but now uh, rook b7 uh, capturing the, the last hope of, of, of Hikaru Nakamura. And now uh, after knight on g2 and uh, queen is under attack, queen d4 pinning the queen, Hikaru Nakamura actually resigned the game. Uh, and he resigned because uh, there is just forced checkmate, for example, knight on e3. Now rook b2, very dangerous, so uh, queen has to move somewhere. Queen h4, let's say. Now rook g2, uh, now the, the knight is pinned, so uh, king has to move to h1. Queen d2, and it's uh, and it's almost Zugzwang. If the queen is moved, then we would have the, the checkmate here. Uh, and if the rook is moved, then the knight is hanging. So yeah, that is nothing can do. Knight c4 also doesn't work. Simply rook h2, okay? And after taking, take this rook, rook on e1 with check, okay? Queen g1 and now f2 winning the game. So uh, this is why after queen on d4, Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. The best game so far in this tournament, that's what a couple of grandmasters said and some commentators. So after this incredible game, uh, we had two to two and then uh, players have to play the blitz uh, games two blitz not armageddon two blitz games and i'm gonna cover it later so uh stay tuned and uh, if you don't want to miss it press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching see you in the next one